All right, welcome to part three of the June 2016 Regents. Now, if you just watched part two, you know that there was a pretty tough part two section for the Common Core Regents. But I'll say this, the part three, which is worth more points, is actually much easier than normal. So you'll see these questions are pretty approachable, in my humble opinion. Now, this one says a barrel of fuel oil is a right circular cylinder. It's probably going to be pretty important. Where the inside measurements of a barrel are a diameter of 22.5 inches and a height of 33.5 inches. There are 20, 231 cubic inches in the liquid gallon. Determine the state to the nearest tenth the gallons of fuel that are in the barrel of fuel. So basically what this is saying is we want to figure out the total volume and we want to figure out how many gallons we could fit into that canister, that whole uh, fuel oil container. All right. Now this is a level 10 question. This is where we learned about 3D shapes. And what we're going to need for this question is simply the volume of a cylinder, right? Because that's, our t that's what the barrel is. It's a right circular cylinder. So that is just a formula that's given to in the region. It's pi r squared times h. All right? Now, very kindly of them, they've given us that information. So the volume is going to be equal to pi times our radius, which is just going to be half of this, 11.25 because right, this is the diameter, we need the radius squared times the height of 33.5. The volume is equal to 3319.86198. Remember, we're not rounding yet because we don't want to get any rounding errors. So we'll write everything we see on the calculator. Now, we don't need to write this yet, but just for the hell of it, this is going to be cubic inches. All right, or inches to the third power. Now, we know that each gallon is 231 cubic inches. So we have to figure out how many go into this barrel. Now, remember, I'm going to say this. Um, remember, well, if you're saying go into, that's division. We want to see how many times 232 goes into this number, this volume. So you should be dividing. So we're going to take this number and we're going to divide it by 231. All right. So I'm just taking that number, dividing it directly by 231, and we should get the volume, sorry, you can get, so we get 57.66, all right? Now the question says, determine state to the nearest tenth, how many gallons of fuel there are. So if this is what we got, 57.66, we're going to say there are 57.7 57 gallons of fuel. And that will get you four points. Now the only things that are really hard, I mean the volume is pretty straightforward, we know how to calculate that. If you divide the 231, you're good. All you had to do really is know how to ground this correctly and you got yourself four points. Not bad, right? Now the second one says parallelogram ABCD, we know that EFG and diagonal DFB. Prove that triangle DEF is similar to triangle BGF. Now this is a level three question. And this is actually similarity. It's also like kind of coupled with parallelogram properties. All right, but let's just go over once again the three ways to prove similarity. There's three ways to prove similarity. One, two, and three. First way to prove it is side, side, side. The second way is side, angle, side. And the third way is angle, angle. Now I want to say, this is what I, I'm going to show you the wrong way I see so many students solve this problem. You're trying to prove similarity. And the average student goes like this. Um, I'm going to go like this. Uh, opposite sides are congruent. And uh, I know these are congruent because diagonals bisect each other. Right? You know you did something like this. Right? You, did, you, you marked up some congruent things. Well, let me just tell you this. One, opposite sides are congruent in parallelogram, but this isn't the full side. So DE and GB are not congruent. You know that DA and CB are congruent, but these are just parts of the whole side. They're not congruent, so you can't say they're congruent. Duh, they don't even look congruent. I cannot believe you marked that. If you did that, I want you to silently and privately slap yourself lightly. That is not cool. Now, the second thing that's not true is that you can't state this. You can't state that diagonals bisect each other. Why? Well. This is a diagonal. That's very true. It goes from one vertex to the other vertex of the parallelogram. But EG over here is not a diagonal. That's not a diagonal. That's not a diagonal. 
not a diagonal. Now, I know it goes diagonally through the, the parallelogram, but it doesn't touch the vertexes. So therefore, it's not a diagonal. So in this case, you don't have two diagonals to bisect each other. So that's not even true. And that's, by the way, the hardest possible way to do this proof on top of all that. So there's many reasons why you are doing this wrong. All you have to do for this similarity proof is pretty straightforward. Just an angle-angle proof. So you want to do this. We can mark this because of vertical angles, right? So here are two triangles. we got vertical angles. That's one angle. And now you just have to find one other angle that is congruent. And we got this guy right here. Why? Well, we know the opposite sides are parallel, so these are alternate interior angles that are congruent. And now we have angle-angle similarity. Done. Nothing else to mark. So this proof can be done in like three seconds. So we have our statements, and we have our reasons. All right? Now, step one is write your givens. So I'm going to just write A, B, C, D is a parallelogram that is a given. I know it's not directly what it says. I would copy it directly if I were you. Now, two, let's just write what we marked. So we know that angle D, F, is that an E? Yeah, D, F, F E is congruent to angle GFB, and that's because vertical angles are congruent. All right, number three, what we're looking to do here is prove that these two angles are congruent, uh, angle EDF and GFBF, but the problem is, First, we have to state that opposite sides are parallel because we only know that alternate interior angles are congruent if opposite sides are parallel. And nothing here tells us that opposite sides are parallel. So we actually have to write that into our proof. Remember, we need every step spelled out. So we're going to say that A, D is parallel to C, B, and that's because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruence. No, no, I did what all the students do. Ugh, are parallel. Jeez. Now, number four, now we can state the angles are congruent. So, angle GBF is congruent to uh, EDF, angle EDF, because alternate interior angles are congruent when lines are parallel okay and then five we've done our whole proof we can just say triangle def is similar to triangle bgf because of angle angle similarity see how straightforward that was look no problem all there that was pretty that was pretty it now the big thing to recognize is this to state altered interior angles are congruent, you first have to establish that the opposite sides are parallel. All right? And that's the big thing here that most students are going to forget, you know, after they've marked everything wrong. All right? So that's how you write this proof, angle, angle, diggity done. And then we have 34. Uh, in the diagram below, triangle ABC, A prime, B prime, C prime is the image of triangle ABC after a transformation. Describe the transformation that was performed. All right, so the transformation. This is a singular transformation. Well, we see that ABC has gotten much bigger, so we know it's going to be a dilation. But there's a few things that we always have to define for a, a dilation. All right, it's the center of dilation. And you also always want to do the scale factor. These are the two things you need to figure out to describe a dilation. Oh, by the way, this is level one. Transformations. Also, if you ever want to remember how to do a question like this, this is actually from lesson 1.7, dilations, part two. Okay, so we need the center of dilation, we need the scale factor. Now, to do the scale factor, you might remember this. You just need the image length over the pre-image length. All right, so we just have to find those two lengths. Now, you could pick any two corresponding sides, and that will give you the scale factor. So I'm going to pick these, these sides over here. So B prime, C prime, that's my image, and B, B prime, C, B, C is my pre-image. So let's count this out. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we got 15 right here, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 6. So the scale factor is going to be 15 over 6, which could also be reduced to 5 halves. Okay, so our scale factor is 5 halves, or you could even write 2.5. All right, now to figure out the center of dilation. Now, my guess here, all right, where all the points are going away from is this point right here, point A. I mean, this, the origin. But you could check that by doing this. Pick any two points. Let's pick A and A prime. All right, this is negative 2, 4. All right, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, negative 5, 10. Now, if I have this center at the origin, if I multiply these by 2.5, it should give me these points, right? Well, negative 2 times 2.5 is negative 5. 4 times 2.5 is 10. So therefore, we know it's centered at the origin because you're just simply multiplying the points by 2.5. So the center is 0, 0, or another way is known as the origin. Another cool way to do it um, that I've seen done is that you could actually just draw a line connecting. Actually, never mind. We'll, we'll just do it that way, all right? So now to describe our transformation, we got our center, we got our scale factor. This is a dilation with a scale factor of 5 halves centered at the origin. All right? Nice. And now we have to explain why they are similar. And this is really just talking about the properties of dilations. And to prove that they're similar, you could just say this. A dilation preserves angle measures. Therefore, triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is similar to triangle ABC because of angle angle similarity. Right? And we know that C is going to be congruent to C. We know B is congruent to B. So since the angle measures are preserved, we know that it's going to be similar because of angle angle. All right, that's it for part three. Come back and join me for part four, beans.